ko te waka huia he kai kau he kōrero, he kai hāpae mā tauranga, he kai te aki taonga. Mau ana ko te tapu o ngā taonga tukuiho, ko tā te waka huia he hono i te hā o tua whakarere ki ngā pātaka mā tauranga o te wā. E putai he kōrero ki te whai ao, ki te ao mārama. A tēnā, ki a whai tātau i te mārama tanga, i roto i e nei taonga. Tēnā koutou tamariki mā, nau mai ki tēnei hōtaka o Rāranga Matihiko. Ko Sam Henari tōku ingoa, ko Jesse Robeson tēnei, and we both work at Te Papatonga Rewa here in Te Whanganui Atara. And together with our friends at Waitangi Treaty Grounds Te Peto Whenua, Waikato Museum Te Whare Taonga o Waikato, and MTG Hawke's Bay Tai Ahurere, we've got some awesome activities for you to do at your kainga all around kaitiakitanga. So Sam, what does it mean to be a kaitiaki? Well, to be a kaitiaki means that we look after and care for things which are precious. So as kaitiaki who work in a museum, it is our job to look after the taonga which are kept here. Another part of our job as kaitiaki who work in a museum is to help to support you to look after your taonga. So, Jesse, what are taonga? Well, taonga are things that are special, precious and important to us. Things like our words and our stories, special places, our unique environments and even the people around us. They're all things that we take care of and that are really important to us. So I'm excited. What are we going to be doing? Well, in this series, we're using digital tools to help explore the relationship which we have with taonga. Nō reira, hia ha te taki mō te rā nei. Well, today's kaupapa is Fano, so we're going to head to the Waitangi Treaty Grounds where Monica's going to be showing us around the whare rūranga, then we're going to head back to the lab where Alicia's got some activities for us to do with the special people in our lives. Sound good? Ai, kā rāwe. Awesome. Let's head over to Monica. Tēnā koutou katoa, nā mai, haere mai e te whānau ki te pito whenua. Welcome to the Waitangi Treaty Grounds. Ko Monica Toko Ingoa, my name is Monica and I'm one of the educators here at Waitangi. Today we're going to look at Fano. Because we're thinking about Kaitiakitanga and Fano, we're going to look at how we and our Fano are linked to this special place through the carvings of the Tupuna, the ancestors at the Farirunanga. Many of you can trace your whakapapa back to these ancestors and they can also act as kaitiaki of both the Farirunanga and of your family. Did you know that Te Tiriti or Waitangi was first signed here on the 6th of February 1840? Almost 100 years later, in the 1930s, Tau Hinare and Sir Apirana Ngata, two important Māori kaitorangapu politicians of their time, they proposed the building of a Farirunanga on the treaty grounds. They saw this as a contribution of Iwi Māori to the 100-year celebrations of the treaty signing in 1940. Every meeting house has a story to tell, so does Te Whare Runanga. On top of this whare, we find the Tiko Tiko, a carved figure representing Kupe. He is often described as the first Polynesian explorer to reach Aotearoa, a rangatira or chief of his people. Today, Kupe is the kaitiaki, the guardian of our whare, and he welcomes all our manuhiri, our visitors. Let's take a look inside. Here inside the whare, we can see lots of paufakairo as well as tukutuku and kofaifai. Together, they tell stories of different iwi, their ancestors, their legends. Here, at the base of the Pautoko Manawa, we can see Rahiri. He was an important rangatira of the iwi of Ngāpohi, an ancestor to all Ngāpohi people. He and his descendants on this pau hold up the roof of the Whare Runanga, so to this day he is kaitiaki to all of us visiting the Whare. Just over here we see another kaitiaki of her people, Hene Amaru. She is the Whare Tupuna, the ancestress of the local iwi Ngāte Hine, the iwi of Tauhinare. She was a kaitiaki to her own people, and later, in the 1930s, her descendants were kaitiaki to the carvers of this whare. This is maybe why her carving is especially detailed and beautiful. It is definitely my favourite inside the whare. So these are three members of one extended whānau linked through their whakapapa, the genealogy. Kupe, Rahiri and Hine Amaru. Here at Waitangi, we remember them through the beautiful carvings inside this whare. 
All carvings in this photo tell stories that are important to their local iwi. Carving designs are often inspired by the natural environment. Here are just some examples of this. This paufakairo represents iwi of the Waikato. You can see the Waikato River with all its bends right here in the middle. If you look carefully, you may also see the representations of tuna, eels, and ika, fish. Have a look at the top of this figure. Can you see the shape of his head? This is typical for carvings from Taranaki. It is inspired by the shape of Taranaki Maunga. Now this carving represents Ngati Perau on the east coast of the North Island. These swirly designs on the outside are a reference to travelling by waka. Don't they remind you of waves? Now for Cairo, carvings are not the only artworks that have been inspired by the natural environment. The design on this tukutuku panel is called Patiki. That word means flounder. It represents a group of stars known as Patiki. Māori might study the moon or the stars to find out if it is a good time to go fishing or for planting crops. Places like this Farirunanga and the carvings can remind us of our whānau, our family and how they look after us or maybe how we look after them. I wonder if you can think of a place that is special to your whānau, maybe your own marae, maybe the home of a relative, a local mountain or a beach. How about you, Team Te Papa? Kia ora, Monica. Do you know that I've actually been to the Farirunanga at Waitangi? Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a really special place for me and my whānau, and many of the whakairu or the carvings that you see there are actually my tūpuna or my ancestors. So, what's a special place to you, Jessie? I think a special place for me would be Mahia Beach, which is close to the city where I was born, Napier. We used to go there all the time as children. My grandfather built a batch there, and I just have a lot of great memories. Oh wow, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to the Learning Lab where Alicia is going to show us a digital tool called Pixlr that's going to help us to share stories about our whānau. Sounds good. Let's go. Kia ora Sam. Kia ora Alicia. Kei te pihi a koe. Kei te pai ho. So we've been learning how to be kaitiaki for our whānau. I've heard that you've got a really interesting whānau. Yeah, well let me show you. Perfect. So. So at the top, we have my koroa, and on the other side, we have my kuya. Awesome. Then underneath them, I will draw their tamariki, which is including my dad. So first of all is my uncle, who is the oldest. Uh, yep. So we'll put him on the left hand side. Then this one is my dad here, and they had one younger sister. Cool, awesome. Now if I keep drawing underneath that, it's going to get really complicated and, yeah. and confusing. So I'll just start again underneath here. My dad, and my mum. Awesome. And I'll just copy what I've done there again. Cool. But obviously not putting in my aunties and uncles. No, of course not. So this is me, because I am Matamua. So here we have my parents, and then me and my brothers. Awesome. So then we'll go one more layer, because I have tamariki as well, and I'd love to show you guys them as well. Perfect. So I'll do myself. <coughs> and my wife, Stacy. Then do the same thing again. We have my son Izzy, my daughter Ellie May. I'll just do EM for now because otherwise I'll be writing all day. <laughs> and then my baby Charlie. Cool. Thanks. So that's my family tree. Great. Another way that you can actually make your family tree even more clear is to use symbols to do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use circles to represent the tāne in my whānau okay. and I'm going to use triangles to represent the wahine. Awesome. So we can go through it like this. So I'm starting to see that it's a little bit of a sequence and everything is in logical order. Yeah, that's exactly right. Awesome. Great. 
So now it's really easy to see from the symbols who are the tāne and who are the wahine in my whānau. Absolutely. Because sometimes you get names which can be used for both tāne and wahine, such as names like Charlie, or even my name Sam, or my brother Jamie. So that's why it can be really helpful to use circles and triangles so that people have a good idea. And the other thing is, this is just going to my grandfather and my grandmother. But I can keep going further and further back, and that's a really interesting thing to do as well. Awesome. Thanks for showing that to me, Sam. Great, no worries. I can actually see that there are different layers of generations in your family tree. Yeah, that's right. How amazing. Yeah, cool. So I believe you've got some digital activities for us to look at now, Alicia. I definitely do. Right, I'll just put this down. So we're going to be using a tool that is called Pixlr, and it's another way of representing your whanau. It is an online photo editing tool where we look at different layers and importing different images together to create a new image and manipulating into something new. Oh, great. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to search for Pixlr X. Cool, I'm going to click on it. <coughs> And then I'm going to click Create New. Great. Now here I get a bunch of different options of the type of file that I can create. So we could make a small image for the web, we could make a full HD image, we could even make an Instagram image, oh, yeah. whatever you'd like. So you just click on what you want. I'm going to go for full HD so that it fits my whole entire screen. Okay, cool. So down the side here, you can see that there are actually different dimensions and you can add in your own dimensions. Oh. So if I was going to create a background for something like a scratch project, mm -hmm. I could figure out the dimensions and put them in there. Oh yes, yep. yep. Now it's really important that we name our files as well so that we can find them later on and we can get them back if we lose them. Okay. So I'm going to name this and I'm going to call it my image. And then all I do is click on create. Cool. So here I get a lovely checkered background. Yep. Cool. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image. Great. So I click on add image. Now you've got three different options here. Mm -hmm. You've got browse, URL or stock. I'm going to choose the browse because I have already saved a photo that I want to use onto my desktop to make it easier for now. Okay, cool. So I click on browse and it pops up. Now I put these images on my desktop to make it easier for myself so that I could find them quicker. Oh yeah, that's pretty yeah. clever, yep. So I'm going to click on this one and click open. Now it asks me, do you want to add the image as a layer in the current document or create a new document? Okay. What I want to do is add it into the current document. Yes. So I'm going to click on that option and here it is. Oh, there we go. Cool, well that's the place, the Whariruranga, where we just saw on Monica's video. Yeah, absolutely. Now you'll notice that this picture doesn't quite stretch to fill my whole entire canvas. Mm. But that's okay, because I can manipulate that myself. Okay. So I'm going to just drag this down the bottom, and you'll see these little handles on the side, these little blue boxes. Yep. If I click and drag, I can either make something smaller, or I can make it bigger. Yep. So I'm just going to keep stretching it out until I'm happy with it. Cool. Okay, that's very similar to when you import images onto other documents, like onto Word or Pages or other bits and pieces like that, isn't it? The same kind of dragging to resize. Absolutely. Yep, yep you're totally right, Sam. Awesome. And then when I click off it, it's done. Cool. Okay. Now you can notice that my layers are down here, down the side. Yep. Just like we talked about layers before with your whakapapa and your family, we also have layers in our Pixlr. Okay, cool. Now what I want to do is add another image, and I'm going to place it on top of this layer here so that I have another layer. Okay, cool. Just like if you were making a piece of artwork and you did all of your background and then you stuck something on top of that background. Okay, cool. cool. So I click on add image again. Yep. And I click on browse. Yep. And here again I've gone straight to my desktop where I know there are some photos of your whanau. Oh, how did you get those photos? Amazing. <laughs> now ask me again do you want to add the image as a layer in the current document or to create a new one? I'm going to add it to the current, and this time it comes up as another layer. Oh. We've gone from having two layers down the side to having three layers. Okay. Cool. Now, obviously, this photo is a little bit large Yes. for our background, so I'm just going to resize it down. Cool. We can always change this as a, at a later time if you decide that that's not the size that you're after. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Ah, oh, cute little baby Charlie. 
Now down the side, you will notice that there are a bunch of different tools that we can use. Mm -hmm. So we've got things like changing the properties, arranging things, cropping things, cutting out things, adjusting things. We can also add a filter, we can add a fix, we can liquefy things, retouch things, add a drawing, and add some elements. Okay. Now these tools are going to become really, really handy for us as we go through and create this project. Yep. The first thing that I want to do is, I'm not so happy with the fact that Charlie is in his own background. I want him to kind of appear as if he is in the image that we have imported as our background. Okay, so you're going to make it look like Charlie is at the Farirunanga? In Absolutely. Work. Okay, cool. Now, there are a couple of different options that we can do to do this. We want to select Cutout, that's the main one. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch of different ways that we can actually cut out the background. Now, it's really important that you select the Remove function so that you remove whatever we're selecting. Yeah. If you select keep, it means you're hanging on to everything and getting rid of it, the okay. other stuff. Okay, cool. cool. So, we want to select remove, and then we can simply draw a shape to get rid of some of the background. Ah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. The other way is we can use magic cutout. Ooh. Now, this one works best if you have a plain background. Okay. Now, you'll notice there's a lot of colors behind Charlie, so this yes. is not going to be our most effective tool. Okay. Because if I select just a tiny bit of it, it's going to go through all the different colors, and it would take quite a, quite a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to take ages. So if you're using a plain white sheet, a plain gray wall, a green screen at home, that would be your best kind of bet. Ah, uh, because then when you click on it, it's going to get rid of the whole thing, Absolutely. as opposed to a little, yeah. Yep. You can also draw the cutout, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to zoom in nice and close. Ah, oh, so cute. Now, for those of you that don't know, I'm just scrolling my mouse wheel, and that's what's zooming me in. But you do have the option of doing that yourself over here, if we just click these buttons. Oh, yeah. Does the same thing. Cool. So I'm just going to draw around Charlie to begin with, as close as I can. I want to be careful that I'm not going to cut off any of his body, such as his ears, which can be quite yes, tricky. I'd, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> I think Charlie would do. And you'll see that some of that background's uh, gone. Yeah, cool. now I'm just going to scroll down here so I can get further down the picture. And I'm going to zoom in and scroll and just continue that process. Just like that. Now the reason that I'm going around the outline first is so that I don't have to be as precise when I'm getting rid of the rest of the background. Ah, uh, okay. Because I know that the, the outline is accurate. Just like that. Cool. Now there's also a little bit in the middle there that we want to get rid of. Now you can actually adjust the size of this brush ah. to make it smaller or larger. And you can also adjust the softness because at the moment it's quite a feather touch yeah, kind of looking yeah. brush. So I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller like this. And then I can get these harder to reach corners of the picture. And then you just colour it in there. And yep, yep. yep. So the thing with, with the draw cutout is that you do have to go over every single part of that picture that you want to uh, get out. Yep, yep. So hence why the magic cutter is actually the quickest tool Yes. normally when you've got a plain background. But for what we are working with, it's best if we use the draw cutout. It'll take a little bit longer, but it is quite accurate. Okay, cool. So now that we've got our outline of Charlie, we can be a little bit more aggressive in how oh, we... Oh yeah, easy. <laughs> how we get rid of the background. So I'm using a larger brush just so that I can get over more of the area. Ah, uh, yep. Cool. So just going over that, making sure all of your areas are covered that you want to get rid of. <laughs> and you can see that it's starting to look like he's no longer in your house, but he's all the way up in Waitangi. Oh, that would be quite helpful with some of the nights he's been up recently. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Great, so it's looking pretty good <laughs> to me. I'm going to zoom out now. Now, at the moment, he looks quite large for the area that he's in. Would yes, you agree? Yes. Yeah, so we're going to click on the Arrange tool, and that means that we can then move him around and resize him. You'll actually notice when I move it around that there are some areas that I haven't actually brushed out properly. Oh, I see, yep. yep. But that's okay, because we can go back and fix that later on, cool. so that's fine. 
So I'm going to pop him over here in the corner. Okay, we could also put him on a little bit of an angle. So he looks like he's doing a, doing a bit of a jig there. Yep, bit of a dance. Cool, and I'm happy with that now. Awesome. Now, the next thing that we can do is we can add an element, because I think it'd be pretty cool to have it something a little bit funny in there for him. Okay, what, what do you mean by element? So an element is something like an overlay or um, a sticker that you might want to put on. For me, I'm going to look for something like maybe a moustache, oh, yeah. a pair of glasses <laughs> that we can add on to Charlie. Yes, I'd like to see that, yes. <laughs> if we click on sticker, we get a bunch of different options. So that you can scroll down the list. There are heaps of different things that you can use. I'm going to use the function called accessories. Cool. And it'll give me a whole bunch of ones that I can <laughs> choose from. Now there's one that I have in mind just down the bottom here. I think he would look great with this on. So all I do is I click it. It appears on my canvas for me. I resize it just like we did before with Charlie. Resize it even more to make sure it's going to fit. Rotate it a little bit to fit with the shape of its face because we rotated him. <laughs> and there we go. All Great. done. So you've just turned my baby into the Monopoly man outside Absolutely. the Fadiranga. Okay, yep. excellent. Thank you for that. What else could you want? <laughs> awesome. So you'll notice that by adding the monocle and the moustache, it's actually created another layer. Okay. So that in itself is layering then on top of the photo. Yep, so we've got a few few layers going there. Absolutely. Now. now if I moved the layers around, you would notice that it disappears. Ah, okay. So because it's gone behind. Because it's gone behind. Okay. So you want to think of that art analogy the whole time. So mm. background and then sticking on top and sticking on top and sticking on top. Yes. So sometimes when you pull something in, you might not be able to find it straight away and it might be in the wrong layer. So it always pays to check down the side. Okay, great. Great tip. Cool. So I'm going to put that back in the right spot. Now I've used a photo of Charlie. Yes. And you are Charlie's dad. I am. So I've been given permission to use the photo of Charlie. Have you? Yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> However, for you guys at home, you need to make sure that you have got the permission of those people around you because it's really important that we don't just use photos of people without asking for their permission yep. first. Yeah. Okay. Especially if we're going to post onto things like social media, mm. if we're going to send them around, we need to make sure that, that person is comfortable with that photo. Yeah. Cool. And I guess that's especially important using tools like this where you can change so much about the image and putting someone in who hasn't given consent that can actually be quite damaging to that person. Absolutely. It's just about keeping ourselves safe online. Yeah. Cool. Now, what I can do is I'm happy with the image. Are you happy with the oh, image? I'm very happy with the Great. image. So what we can do is we can save it. Okay. It's got the same file name that I gave it before, so that makes it really nice and easy for me. Yep. Now I can choose a file type. I can decide if I want a JPEG, a PNG, or if I want to create some other kind of file type. Okay. I can also choose the type of quality that I'm after, and again, we can change those dimensions if we yep. weren't happy with them in the first place. Oh, okay. All I click now is download, and... It's a very easy process. It goes straight into your downloads folder and it's there for you to share with whoever you like. Great. So now I can upload that to social media and show all my friends and whānau a picture of Charlie in a monocle with a moustache doing Absolutely. a haka outside the Whareirunanga. Okay, Absolutely. excellent. <laughs> I'm sure they'd love to see that. Fantastic. Now for those of you at home, it would be awesome to see if you guys could have a go with either the family tree that we were looking at before or representing your whānau in a different way such as our digital form. Great. Well, ngā mihi nui kia koe, Alicia. Thank you so much for going through that pixel with us. That's, you know, it's really interesting and it was actually quite easy once you get the hang of it to Absolutely. learn how to do it. Yeah. So I'm going to shoot back and tell Jessie all about it. So Perfect. thanks again and we'll talk later. Thank you. Kia ora, Jessie. Did you see how me and Alicia used Pixlr to manipulate two images, one of my son and one of Te Whareirunanga at Waitangi, to show him where he belongs? It's actually really important to our whānau because he's never been there before. So being a kaitiaki means you were able to support your son to make those connections. Ai tika. And actually Pixlr is a really easy tool to use. In fact, I might give it a go when I get home. That sounds like a great idea. Your home should have a go at making some stuff for the special people in your lives. And if you like it and they like it, upload it to social media using the hashtag below. So that's us for now. Kaki te See you again. <laughs>